Hi there. This is the day the Lord has made, and thanks for joining me in these readings. Here are the readings for day number 62 in the Digging Deeper Daily reading plan, Leviticus 19 and 20, Psalm 20, and Luke 13. Yesterday we learned about the rule that all sacrifices be done at the tabernacle, the prohibitions of eating anything containing animal blood, and forbidden sexual practices. Leviticus 19 The Lord also said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the entire community of Israel. You must be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must show great respect for your mother and father, and you must always observe my Sabbath days of rest. I am the Lord your God. Do not put your trust in idols or make metal images of gods for yourself. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice a peace offering to the Lord, offer it properly so you will be accepted by God. The sacrifice must be eaten on the same day you offer it or on the next day. Whatever is left over until the third day must be completely burned up. If any of the sacrifice is eaten on the third day, it will be contaminated, and I will not accept it. Anyone who eats it on the third day will be punished for defiling what is holy to the Lord and will be cut off from the community. When you harvest the crops of your land, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your fields, and do not pick up what the harvesters drop. It is the same with your grape crop. Do not strip every last branch of grapes from the vines, and do not pick up the grapes that fall to the ground. Leave them for the poor and the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord your God. Do not steal. Do not deceive or cheat one another. Do not bring shame on the name of your God by using it to swear falsely. I am the Lord. Do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not make your hired workers wait until the next day to receive their pay. Do not insult the deaf or cause the blind to stumble. You must fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not twist justice in legal matters by favoring the poor or being partial to the rich and powerful. Always judge people fairly. Do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. Do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened. I am the Lord. Do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. Confront people directly so you will not be held guilty for their sin. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You must obey all of my decrees. Do not mate two different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two different kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven from two different kinds of thread. If a man has sex with a slave girl whose freedom has never been purchased but who is committed to become another man's wife, he must pay full compensation to her master. But since she is not a free woman, neither the man nor the woman will be put to death. The man, however, must bring a ram as a guilt offering and present it to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will purify him before the Lord with the ram of the guilt offering, and the man's sin will be forgiven. When you enter the land and plant fruit trees, leave the fruit unharvested for the first three years and consider it forbidden. Do not eat it. In the fourth year, the entire crop must be consecrated to the Lord as a celebration of praise. Finally, in the fifth year, you may eat the fruit. If you follow this pattern, your harvest will increase. I am the Lord, your God. Do not eat meat that has not been drained of its blood. 
Do not practice fortune-telling or witchcraft. Do not trim off the hair of your temples or trim off your beards. Do not cut your bodies for the dead, and do not mark your skin with tattoos. I am the Lord. Do not defile your daughter by making her a prostitute, or the land will be filled with prostitution and wickedness. Keep my Sabbath days of rest and show reverence toward my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not defile yourselves by turning to mediums or to those who consult the spirits of the dead. I am the Lord your God. Stand up in the presence of the elderly and show respect for the aged. Fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not take advantage of foreigners who live among you in your land. Treat them like native-born Israelites and love them as you love yourself. Remember that you were once foreigners living in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or volume. Your scales and weights must be accurate. Your containers for measuring dry materials and liquids must be accurate. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You must be careful to keep all of my decrees and regulations by putting them into practice. I am the Lord. Leviticus 20 The Lord said to Moses, Give the people of Israel these instructions, which apply both to native Israelites and to the foreigners living in Israel. If any of them offer their children as a sacrifice to Moloch, they must be put to death. The people of the community must stone them to death. I myself will turn against them and cut them off from the community, because they have defiled my sanctuary and brought shame on my holy name by offering their children to Molech. And if the people of the community ignore those who offer their children to Molech and refuse to execute them, I myself will turn against them and their families and will cut them off from the community. This will happen to all who commit spiritual prostitution by worshipping Molech. I will also turn against those who commit spiritual prostitution by putting their trust in mediums or in those who consult the spirits of the dead. I will cut them off from the community. So set yourselves apart to be holy, for I am the Lord your God. Keep all my decrees by putting them into practice, for I am the Lord who makes you holy. Anyone who dishonors father or mother must be put to death. Such a person is guilty of a capital offense. If a man commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, both the man and the woman who have committed adultery must be put to death. If a man violates his father by having sex with one of his father's wives, both the man and the woman must be put to death, for they are guilty of a capital offense. If a man has sex with his daughter-in-law, both must be put to death. They have committed a perverse act and are guilty of a capital offense. If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man as with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act. They must both be put to death, for they are guilty of a capital offense. If a man marries a woman and her mother, he has committed a wicked act. The man and both women must be burned to death to wipe out such wickedness from among you. If a man has sex with an animal, he must be put to death, and the animal must be killed. If a woman presents herself to a male animal to have intercourse with it, she and the animal must be put to death. You must kill both, for they are guilty of a capital offense. If a man marries his sister, the daughter of his father or his mother, and they have sexual relations, it is a shameful disgrace. They must be publicly cut off from the community. Since the man has violated his sister, he will be punished for his sin. If a man has sexual relations with a woman during her menstrual period, Both of them must be cut off from the community, for together they have exposed the source of her blood flow. 
Do not have sexual relations with your aunt, whether your mother's sister or your father's sister. This would dishonor a close relative. Both parties are guilty and will be punished for their sin. If a man has sex with his uncle's wife, he has violated his uncle. Both the man and the woman will be punished for their sin, and they will die childless. If a man marries his brother's wife, it is an act of impurity. He has violated his brother, and the guilty couple will remain childless. You must keep all my decrees and regulations by putting them into practice. Otherwise, the land to which I am bringing you as your new home will vomit you out. Do not live according to the customs of the people I am driving out before you. It is because they do these shameful things that I detest them. But I have promised you, you will possess their land because I will give it to you as your possession. A land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God who has set you apart from all other people. You must therefore make a distinction between ceremonially clean and unclean animals and between clean and unclean birds. You must not defile yourselves by eating any unclean animal or bird or creature that scurries along the ground. I have identified them as being unclean for you. You must be holy because I, the Lord, am holy. I have set you apart from all other people to be my very own. Men and women among you who act as mediums or who consult the spirits of the dead must be put to death by stoning. They are guilty of a capital offense. Today's psalm, Psalm 20, is a prayer for the nation of Israel and their king asking for national security. Psalm 20 for the choir director, a psalm of David. In times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. May he send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you from Jerusalem. May he remember all your gifts and look favorably on your burnt offerings. In times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. May he grant all your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. He will answer him from his holy heaven and rescue him by his great power. Some nations boast of their chariots and horses. But we will boast because of the reputation of the Lord our God. Those nations will fall down and collapse, but we will rise up and stand firm. Give victory to our King, O Lord. Answer our cry for help. In the second half of Luke 12, Jesus taught about being ready for his return and to guard against division. Luke 13 about this time, Jesus was informed that Pilate had murdered some of the people from Galilee as they were offering sacrifices at the temple. Jesus started teaching by asking, Do you think those Galileans were worse sinners than all the other people from Galilee? Is that why they suffered? Not at all. And you will perish too unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And what about the eighteen people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Were they the worst sinners in Jerusalem? No, and I tell you again that unless you repent, you too will perish. Then Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden, 
and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it, but he was always disappointed. Finally he said to his gardener, I've waited three years, and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. The gardener answered, Sir, give it one more chance. Leave it another year, and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for eighteen years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her, and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God! But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. There are six days in a week for working, he said to the crowd. Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord replied, You hypocrites! Each of you works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox or your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for eighteen years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? This shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things he did. Then Jesus introduced his teaching by asking, What is the kingdom of God like? Here is how I illustrate it. It is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make nests in its branches. Next he said, Here is another illustration of the kingdom of God. It is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he went, always pressing on toward Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He replied, Work hard to enter the narrow door to God's kingdom. For many will try to enter, but will fail. When the master of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. You will stand outside knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, But we ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. And he will reply, I tell you, I don't know you or where you came from. Get away from me, all you who do evil. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for you will see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you will be thrown out and people will come from all over the world, from east and west, north and south, to take their places in the kingdom of God. And note this, some who seem least important now will be the greatest then, and some who are the greatest now will be the least important then. At that time some Pharisees said to him, Get away from here if you want to live. King Herod Antipas wants to kill you. Jesus replied, Go tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will accomplish my purpose. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next day I must proceed on my way, 
for it wouldn't do for a prophet of God to be killed anywhere else except in Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills prophets and stones God's messengers, how often I have wanted to gather your children as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now, look, your house is abandoned, forsaken, and you will never see me again until you say, Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Our glorious Father, your word is wonderful. Through that parable of the fig tree, Jesus was telling those Israelites then that they had only a limited time to bear fruit for God or else they would be chopped down like a useless tree. O oh, Father, may we in our lives show the fruit that you desire. May we not be found knocking at the outside of the door when the invitations have all been answered and the seats in heaven are filled. Lord, help us to be those who enter by the narrow door. May we be the ones who know you and are known by you and live our lives for the glory of Christ who gave himself for us.